Hey everyone, Mike here from Envy Creative, and I hope you're all staying safe and sound in the lockdown, and fingers crossed that things are lifted soon. But in the meantime, I know a lot of people are starting to receive money from their stimulus checks, from the EIDL, and from unemployment. So what I thought I would do is put together a list of 10 things that filmmakers could maybe use that money towards different gear or different things that would make their life easier without spending the full EIDL or the full stimulus check. Now if you're not sure what I'm talking about with the EIDL or stimulus check or things like that, I would actually really recommend this other YouTuber. His channel's called Meet Kevin, and I'll put a link in the description below, but I would highly recommend you check out his channel and his videos. He does daily updates with videos about all of the things that are going on in the United States, about different funding avenues that businesses and sole proprietors and individuals can take advantage of so that you can still get income and still get some money in these times. Now the first one is the biggest one. And this isn't something that you're gonna be able to pay fully with the funds that you get, but it will be a good stepping stone to be able to start making payments on it, and that is a new camera. Now, if you've watched some of the other YouTube videos on our channel, you know that I'm a big advocate of taking advantage of the financing that a lot of the camera manufacturers provide. For instance, with Canon, sometimes they offer 18-month 0% financing, and sometimes they offer 24-month 0% financing. But there are other companies like Sony, Panasonic, and some of the others that also offer financing for getting new cameras. Now you might be thinking, wait, I don't want to spend all my money just on a down payment or a deposit or anything for a new camera, but just hear me out and I'll explain more about it. The thing with a lot of these financing programs is they actually use the term lease, but it's more of a lease purchase. So what you do is they offer you 0% financing for the length of the lease, and then at the end, once you pay off the lease, the camera's yours. So for instance, if you wanted to buy a Canon C200 brand new and Canon is offering a 18 month 0% financing program, you would actually only be paying about $300 a month for the camera until you pay it off. So here in the US, if you get your $1,200 stimulus check, that's four months of payments that you automatically have covered. And within those four months, you can use that camera to make money so that you can have some left over so that you can start paying for the camera when your stimulus check runs out. Now I know there are some cameras that you could buy just outright with your stimulus check or with your EIDL, but I think this is actually a really good time to invest in something new, especially with a little bit of the lockdown, so you have time to see its ins and outs and also play with the camera, so by the time you're ready to go back to work, you have everything figured out and you're ready to go. Now I know at the beginning of the video I said that I would cover things that wouldn't eat up all your stimulus check or all of your EIDL, but with camera payments, Hopefully you'll be using the camera to make income. So really the EIDL and the stimulus money is really just helpful to offset some of the payments and make sure you have funding at least for a few months worth of payments before you make income on it. So let's move on to our second one and that is a server or NAS which stands for Network Attached Storage. Now if you're a filmmaker we all are using a lot of storage nowadays to store footage files and also project files. Now obviously we can't replace all the external hard drives that we've all accrued over the years and that have their individual purposes, but what we can do is we can kind of be smarter about where all of our footage lives and where all of our projects live so that if anything were to happen, we're backed up and we know that all of our files are safe. So here at Envy Creative, we actually use Synology servers to back up all of our footage, and we actually work off the server directly to do all of our videos and to do all of our edits for our clients' projects. So at the studio, we have a six-bay Synology server, but actually here at my house, I have a four-bay Synology server with really, really high-capacity hard drives that we use as an off-site archive server. So pretty much when we're done with everything at the studio, we bundle it all up, prepare it for archive, and then I bring it to my house and it's all stored there for archive. Now I'm not saying you need to buy two servers, all I'm saying is if you have a server that has between four and six bays, you'll have about between one and two hard drive fail tolerance, which means if one or two hard drives fail, you're not going to lose everything and you can just replace those hard drives with no data loss. 
Now one of the reasons I just pushed Synology is because I've been using them for years and I've started off with just a two drive bay and then I moved up to a more advanced two drive bay and then a four drive bay and then a six drive bay and I've tried some other NAS servers and Synology is just the easiest to work with. It has the nicest interface and it's really robust for the amount of features that it gives and for the price. Plus, you can use your stimulus or EIDL without breaking the bank by maybe buying a diskless server, which means it doesn't have any disks starting out, and that brings the price way, way down. And then you can maybe go on to either disassemble some of your external hard drives and put those hard drives in there and just make an array, or you can maybe buy some used hard drives off of somewhere like eBay, which I've done a few times and I've never had problems with it and that's a really great way to get really high quality hard drives that have maybe just been in a server farm or something like that so that you can get your server up and running right away without spending a lot of money. So number three is you want to get yourself a good wired microphone. Now I know that nowadays a lot of people are just really emphasizing the importance of wireless microphones but it's never too late and never too early to invest in a good wired microphone because if your camera has phantom power, then they'll never lose battery. And even if they do need a battery, usually it's just one double A rather than needing to charge them like a lot of wireless mics need. So here at NV Creative, we've gone through a lot of different wired microphones and we found two that work really well and one is a little bit higher end and one is definitely at the lower end, but it gets a real bang for the buck. So the first one I wanna tell you about is our cheaper ones, which is the Samsung CO2 microphones. And what they are is they actually come in a pack of two and they're $140 for the two pack. So that means they're about $70 each. And we use them for our soundproof and white backdrop room. And we also actually use them on camera if maybe our other microphone is being used on another project or we just need to throw something on a camera just to make sure that we're getting some backup audio if we're wearing a lav mic. Even though the microphones are pretty cheap for balanced condenser microphones, you really get a lot for your money by getting two microphones and also pretty good audio quality in case maybe this is your first purchase of a wired microphone. Now they are XLR microphones, so you just need to be sure you either have an adapter or your camera has XLR inputs. Now the second wired microphone we use here at Envy Creative is the higher end one, which is the Sennheiser MKE 600. Now this is one of those microphones that's kind of the industry standard, and it goes for a little bit more than $300. But I can't tell you how many times we've used this microphone, even over some of our wireless microphones, where it just sounds fantastic. And if you really just want a microphone that will last you a long time and get the best sound possible for a, a little bit over $300 microphone, I would highly, highly, highly recommend looking into it. And if you actually go online and look at reviews for the MKE 600 versus other higher end microphones or even some lower end, a lot of people just praise it for its high audio quality over even higher end microphones. Okay, so let's move on to number four, and that is wireless microphones. Now we already talked about wired microphones, so it's time to talk about wireless. And again, we're gonna give you two suggestions. One is a little higher end and one is a little lower end. But let's start with the lower end first, and that is the Rode Wireless Go microphones. So I think about a year ago, Rode really hit the market strong by releasing these microphones that it's just really easy to pair. It works with phones, it works with cameras. You can use the transmitter by itself with a built-in microphone, and you can also plug in a microphone to it to use it as a normal lav mic, and the compact size of both the transmitter and the receiver. I'm sure if you Google reviews for it, a lot of other people will agree that this is one of the best microphones for $200 that you could possibly get right now. So since we're shooting from home right now, we don't have a lot of our big equipment here. It's still at the studio, which is locked down right now, but I'm actually using the Rode Wireless Go mic right now with our Canon C200, and I've been talking with my editor, and he's actually preferring that over our shotgun mic that's mounted to the camera right now. So now let's talk about the higher end microphone for the wireless microphones I'm talking about, which is the Sennheiser AVX system. 
Now we've actually done a video about the Sennheiser AVX system, which I would highly suggest you go and watch before buying, since we really go in depth about why we like it and the benefits versus some other wireless microphone systems. Now there are two different kits that you can get with the Sennheiser AVX system. You can either get one that has the Sennheiser ME2 microphone or one that has the Sennheiser MKE2 microphone. And basically the difference between the two of them are about $300 and it has to do with the wireless microphone capsule, which one gives you a little bit better sound than the other. Now, like I said, these are a little higher end, so the MKE2 one is about $1,000 and the ME2 one is about $600. But like I said, if you're interested in maybe getting one of those or learning more, be sure to check out our other video where we go in depth and tell you the pros and cons about them. Okay, so number five, it's not really something for filmmakers, it's kind of something for everybody, but I think now might be a good time to invest in a good router, whether that's at your studio or workplace or at home. Now as a filmmaker, everything happens online nowadays, submitting to film festivals, getting footage to each other, delivering videos to clients, Pretty much everything. And I'm sure a fair share of us have had our gripes with our internet and the speed of our internet. Before doing video production full time, I actually came from an IT background, and that's why I can tell you it's so important to have a good router. I might even go one step further to say to get a modem as well. A lot of internet providers nowadays provide a router to you that has a modem and router built in but it's much, much faster and more efficient to buy a modem by itself and then hook that modem up to another router. So they're not the same all-in-one system, but by having two devices, you're actually letting it do its own work and what it needs to do properly so that things just run a lot faster and a lot smoother. Now here at home, I have the Linksys EA9500, which is actually about three or $400 nowadays. It has one 2.4 gigahertz network and actually two five gigahertz networks to help balance the load or to create more networks if you have more people working on it. Like I said, it's definitely one of the more higher end routers, but I would highly recommend it because it has eight antennas, but it also has eight gigabit ethernet ports in the back, which lets you have a lot more things plugged into it rather than your standard four gigabit ethernet ports on normal routers. Or if you're looking for a router with 10 gigabit, Netgear does have one of their routers that has a 10 gigabit input, which I would highly recommend if you need to get those files transferred really fast. So for number six, I would highly recommend getting a new lens for your camera. Now, this can be any assortment of lens, but if you'd like to know specific lenses that we use here at NV Creative that we've kind of honed over the years and created what we think is a perfect lens kit for at least our uses, then check out our other video where we go through the best lenses that we use, and they're all sub thousand dollar lenses. They go from about $150 all the way up to about $1,000, so there's a big wide range for you to use and to pick which one you might want to invest in. Now number seven may seem a little menial, but it is important to keep everything that you're purchasing and all your valuable equipment safe, and that is a good camera case. Now thankfully nowadays, camera cases can be found pretty cheap, but what we ended up using and buying over the years are Pelican cases, which a lot of people use, but we actually started buying new Pelican cases with Pelican's new Air series, which are much lighter, a little more compact, but with the same resilience and same protection that Pelican uses on all of their cases. Okay, so number eight is software. And in today's video day and age, about half of our workflow is software based, if not more, because we start on software, whether that's our script writing software or email client, and then we actually get to film, but we still use software on set sometimes to keep us on track and moving. And then the last part is editing and delivery, which is also software based. So with the software that you need or that you would wanna invest in with your stimulus or EIDL, it really depends on what you have and what you don't have at the current moment. So if you needed to invest in things in pre-production, you might wanna look into maybe project management software like Airtable or script writing software like Final Draft. For the production segment, I know that a lot of colleagues of mine use Shotlister Pro, which is an iPad app. I believe it's paid, but a lot of them swear by it for keeping them on track during shoots. And then when it comes to post-production, you have a lot of choices in what you can invest your stimulus or EIDL in. If you need an editing program, there's Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. 
There's Final Cut Pro X. If you need to deliver the files, there's things like Dropbox and Google Drive or File Mail. And if you needed to get some different effects, Red Giant has their effects packs, and a lot of other people have LUT packs and different effects packs that you can buy and use. So by using your EIDL or Stimulus to invest in software, you have a lot of different options, and it really just depends on where you need it. Now number nine is something that a lot of filmmakers really need, especially if they're all in one, or even if they have a studio, is a computer or computers. Now I know that $1,200 of stimulus or even $1,000 of EIDL really doesn't go that far when it comes to getting a computer that can handle, say, 4K video, but there are different options you can go with where the $1,000 or $1,200 can really go far and help you with a computer that could definitely handle 4K video. So for all of the Mac users out there, I would highly recommend going to a YouTube channel of this guy, Luke Miani, and what he has is a lot of different options for either building up refurbishing Macs to give them great potential for editing, or he gives great tips on which older Macs to buy that might be within your budget that can still handle your workflow. Or if you're a PC user, I would highly recommend the YouTube channel Snazzy Labs and going over to his channel to see maybe what you can do to build a computer, whether it's a PC or Hackintosh, that can also handle your workflow under your budget. Now with this video I wanted to start it off strong with a camera purchase and I also wanted to end it strong and that's with another big purchase. So for number 10 with your EIDL and stimulus you might have between an extra $1200 or $2200 depending if you only got one or both and it might be a good time to look into locations for maybe moving out of your house and getting a studio space and that could cover first month's rent and a security deposit. Now, one of the big difficulties with a lot of people that are looking to move into, say, either an office space, studio space, or just a different location of their house is just saving up the money for not only the first month's rent, but also the security deposit, which is normally equal to the first month's rent or the first and last month's rent. Now, I haven't been using my house as a home studio for almost, I would say, eight years now, and I really couldn't go back to doing it because a studio space or even an office space, is which what I had first, really gives you versatility to do things that you can't do in your house or that you wouldn't want to do in your house. And like I said, with this free money that you're getting, it might be a good idea to either set that aside for that or to maybe start looking around since I'm sure a lot of people are going to be really interested in getting their spaces leased because unfortunately a lot of people are going out of work or businesses are closing because they just can't keep up with what's going on in the world with the lockdown right now and their decrease of customers. Now again, it is kind of a double-edged sword because we do feel really bad for the people that aren't able to keep their businesses running, but the landlords do need to fill the space and this might be a good time to look into maybe getting a space of your own for your filmmaking. I hope everybody enjoyed this list of 10 filmmaker things that you could get with your EIDL or stimulus. For all of the different YouTubers that I mentioned in this list, I'm going to be putting their links to their channels in the description below so you can check those out. And if you guys have any recommendations on what you can use your EIDL or stimulus on, feel free to leave them in the comments or if you have any questions about the things that I listed today, feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to answer the questions.